what is right and what is wrong was impressed upon. It was my interest to study uh, how the brain develops in the humans. They are still etched in my mind. Welcome to Scientifically Yours. I'm Gohar Raza and you are watching Scientifically Yours. In this program, we introduce a woman scientist, a scientist who has excelled in her field. Today we have Dr. Shashi Vadhva with us, a very colorful personality when she was in school and college. Dr. Shashi Vadhva, you come from a family where there was support for girls to get educated and support for the highest education that one could give at that time. You excelled in sports, you did plays, and you also excelled in studies. How did you cope up at that time? Um, I cannot really recall how I coped, but yes, it was part of the activities that were going on, and uh, one just went with the flow and enjoyed uh, whatever was being done in school and participated in various activities. Were they school regimented? There was discipline, uh, there was moral science, there, so all the good things of life were being uh, taught in this taught, school. Taught and uh, were taken care of uh, being a convent school. Uh, it was uh, uh, not too much regimented. But yes, there was a discipline which was inculcated and what is right and what is wrong was impressed upon and I guess that is what we imbibed. Uh, you were born in Delhi yes. and uh, your father had a job which uh, exposed you to various parts of the country. Did that help in developing your personality? Yes, I think I was very fortunate uh, because it gave us uh, um, uh, uh, an all-round kind of an exposure. You lived close to Sabzi Mandi in Delhi. Do you remember the school that you were in at that time? Yes, I was very tiny. I think from first to third standard probably I was there and it was called as Chandraval School. And um, I don't remember much of the details but I do remember the name of the school. And uh, it was fun going to school even as Which a child. Which school was the best school that you uh, studied in? Uh, uh, well, uh, uh, I don't recall much of my earlier schools, but the ma majority of my uh, major chunk of my t uh, learning and uh, has happened in Jabalpur. And I studied there in St. Joseph's Convent and that I think to me was one of the best uh, times of my life. You still actually. remember I teachers still there? I still remember my teacher and one of the nuns who was uh, specially taught science actually uh, impressed me a lot. So did she play a role? I would say that because we were learning all kinds of subjects as social studies and uh, um, you know different aspects uh, but uh, mm, definitely biology and uh, zoology at that time botany, zoology, it, it interested me. And then we would have gardening sessions in school and we were asked to look after a plant. And that was uh, probably all that had a impact in some way or the other. And more so uh, when I went to college, the zoology uh, professor who taught me in, in intermediate science, which was the, at that time the 12th uh, equivalent of today, and that was, uh, that teacher, that professor uh, the, of zoology, the kind of teaching that was done, the notes, the diagrams, they are still etched in my mind. And the experiments that we did, uh, I think all that really, really played a lot of, uh, a, lo a lot of role in my uh, getting towards uh, science. And I really enjoyed zoology and botany classes not much of chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't like that subject? No, I, I was good at it, uh, considering that I used to, uh, got the highest mark in biology. You of can see you that. <laughs> so medalist, I was uh, yeah. uh, on one side. But chemistry and physics were not my very strong points, but yet, yes, I enjoyed the two subjects. I too. hope that <laughs> teachers in the country are listening to you. 
that they play such a vital role in yes. shaping the mind of the student. Definitely. And uh, the future directions they give. And the kind of seriousness that you see later on in your life about the subject, about the kind of contribution that you make later on is shaped there in the school. They are the gardens of nurturing bright scientists in the country. Yes. As children, one, are Im one is impressionable. And I think those impressions do uh, carry on uh, for a very, very long time. And now that I study developmental neurobiology, and uh, the, its impact can now be studied and seen at molecular levels and uh, other changes that are taking place. And I think it uh, definitely is a very, very uh, special uh, time for uh, in, in any uh, one's life where you have to have good teachers who motivate you and give you a direction. I'll have to take a break here. Don't go anywhere. We'll continue the discussion. इंटरनेट में इंफॉर्मेशन क्या कभी हवा भी होगी रेशन सोचो के नहीं तो पता कैसे चलेगा विज्ञान प्रसार ताकि हर निर्णय ज्ञान आधारित हो विज्ञान प्रसार ए फिफ्टी इंस्टीट्यूशनल एरिया सेक्टर सिक्सटी टू नो डॉट ई मेल इन्फो एट विज्ञान प्रसार डॉट जी ओ वी डॉट इन वेबसाइट डब्ल्यू Back to scientifically yours, we were discussing with Dr. Shashi Vadhwa about her childhood. Now let's talk a little bit more about your contribution to science. You chose neurobiology and especially developmental neurobiology. This is a very difficult subject. It's a difficult subject because the kind of machine that nature has created in terms of brain, human brain especially is the most complex machine in the nature. So how did you choose this area? And why did you choose this area? It was an extremely difficult area. Uh, certainly, the brain as such is a very complicated uh, area to, and it needs uh, to be understood and is being explored extensively. We don't it's understand it fully even now. Even now. and it. It seems to be one of the frontiers where one needs to get a greater handle on understanding how it functions. It definitely was a very attractive proposition and it so happened that uh, as a youngster, I was, as an MBBS student, I was interested in the nervous system. Uh, but when I joined anatomy, I got the thesis which was related to the brain and that deepened my interest in it and subsequently into the development as the unfolding of the developing brain uh, really excited me and therefore I wanted to delve further deeper into it. Some philosophers have called it uh, the refinest form of the matter. It has played a major role in the development of human beings. When we started from Africa, the brain size was small. 
as we moved on, the brain size of the human being was suddenly enlarged. Uh, would you talk about that as well to our viewers? In terms of evolution? Yeah. Uh, well, that is definitely one aspect of it. That, that the area is not my specialization, but uh, yes, I'm sure that there uh, would be a lot of changes which would have impacted the development in a particular direction. So, and those developments are even now taking place, or uh, subtly, subtly, and the evolution is going on. Yes, it is. It is, and that is what probably will change the way uh, the brain would be functioning and evolve subsequently, I guess. So does that make your field more difficult? That the brain itself is in, in, in a state of quite fast evolution yes. at micro levels. And does it make it difficult for you to study the brain? I think that is what one is trying to understand at the moment because each one of these aspects is is producing changes in the DNA and therefore the study of epigenetics and the way not only just in behavior but also in response to disease one is trying to understand how these changes are being brought about and I am sure that these changes are what are going to influence how the brain is going to uh, modify and change itself subsequently. What has been your contribution in uh, the scientific knowledge about brain? Right. Uh, being in the department of anatomy and uh, structure being my strong point and as well as the techniques at looking at, uh, structurally looking at the brain, uh, it was my interest to study uh, how the brain develops in the humans and for which I found that very little uh, molecular level studies were available when I was getting into it. Although animal studies were very, very uh, uh, significant uh, and uh, so You had I to experiment and study animal uh, uh, brain structures and then graduate to the human structure. Yeah, that information was already available from, mm -hmm. from the scientific literature. But what exactly happens in the human brain was not uh, very clear. And at that point in time, the techniques of immunohistochemistry, uh, all these were, had come into force. In, and therefore, I thought why one should be looking at it, uh, the brain as such. So there was a possibility of obtaining uh, fetal specimens uh, with the, uh, uh, and therefore I uh, sort of delved into that and uh, it was very, very uh, interesting to uh, look at the visual system first, uh, one of the very important special senses that we have and therefore a lot of work was done on retina, human retina as to what levels of uh, how the uh, cell types, particularly the ganglion cells develop and mature and how do they change their shape. Uh, all these were uh, looked at with scanning electron microscopy, transmission electron microscopy as well as the chemical nature of the change of these uh, uh, various cell types and their neurotransmitters. So that was a, a good chunk of uh, work that we did and published and uh, in fact, literature on the human uh, material is one of our major contributions that we have made to international I understand that I, uh, as a camera, is not a very efficient camera. Uh, we have developed better cameras and only one degree of retina, which is of the size of my thumb from a distance uh, of this kind, operates as the sensor. And it's not a very good sensor. It's the brain which scans the images that are transmitted to it. And it is fascinating to know that how brain corrects and keeps on correcting these images. And we see what we see. What is your uh, opinion about the kind of research that is going on in that area? Uh Yes, uh, we are uh, in a phase of learning more and more about these, but I would stick to the development part of it mm -hmm. because that's the uh, my uh, area of uh, work. 
and uh, there is a lot of uh, changes that take place and there is a lot of plasticity that occurs not only during development but also subsequently uh, there, there development, are changes. Development, what you mean by development is from fetal, from fetal stage to, to, to the uh, uh, adult, adult stage. stage and but even in adult the changes do take place but at a very minor small scale and at a very peripheral level with age with uh, the changes that take place in the cones uh, as well as the rods which are the major photoreceptors we are looking we have looked into that also and we do find changes there are there are what kind of changes are uh, these there there is and uh, what implications these changes have have on uh, human development in in the adult we were referring to now in terms of age, age changes and they are in the form of uh, deposition of uh, lipofuscin and as a result of wear and tear there is a loss of these uh, uh, parts of the rods and cones and they and those with loss of these cells and loss of the receptors there is a uh, loss in the visual capabilities we'll come back after a break the discussion is at a very crucial juncture don't go anywhere we'll come back kaisi hua aasmaan nila pani ko kaun karta gila ye dharti kyun hai ko hamare jeevan mein suraj ka kya hai role hawai jahaz hawa mein kaise ud jata puri ko kaun hai bulata kaun bharta internet mein information क्या कभी हवा भी होगी रेशन सोचो के नहीं तो पता कैसे चलेगा विज्ञान प्रसार ताकि हर निर्णय ज्ञान आधारित हो विज्ञान प्रसार ए फिफ्टी इंस्टीट्यूशनल एरिया सेक्टर सिक्सटी टू नोएडा ई मेल इन्फो एट विज्ञान प्रसार डॉट जी ओ वी डॉट इन वेबसाइट डब्ल्यू 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 डॉट विज्ञान प्रसार डॉट जी ओ वी डॉट इन scientific temple be the basis for building nation welcome back to scientifically yours we were discussing brain research and the implication of this research on brain to generally an individual and collective groups of humanity what kind of impact is going to be there on patients or abnormalities that you encounter in society after the results are published and uh, methods are developed to correct these abnormalities uh, what is the latest that you are doing Uh, That's what I mean. Yes, in the last ten years, uh, we have been looking at the effect of sound on the developing auditory system, and in that context, we've used a chick model, and we provide sounds, either music or vehicular traffic noise, to the developing embryo, and we've looked at how the uh, the auditory cortex and the other relay stations develop in the auditory pathway. and uh, it has been which means that you are uh, basically studying how we uh, hear sounds and what impact is there on our development when the sounds are loud or they they are musical or various kinds of sounds yes uh, particularly its impact on the brain and the part of the brain which is uh, related to uh, the auditory system and um, interestingly what uh, we have 
uh, looked at and we have reported also that there is a change with loud noise uh, which is on the negative side. It has a negative effect on the, uh, on the number of the neurons, on the uh, synapses and the molecular machinery, synaptic molecular machinery that is there in the brain which is concerned with the auditory uh, listening. This is during the fittest period or later on? So after giving and then, then just looking at when the ba chicken is born or when the, uh, the equivalent would be that the embryo, uh, the human baby is born, yes. uh, how uh, uh, having given during this period of development, how it would have impacted the born child. And the conclusion is that loud sounds and uh, sounds that are not musical would give uh, a, a negative impact a in negative terms impact. of there is a loss of cells, there is a reduction in the uh, number of uh, the synapses which are a part of this. It affects directly affects the brain? Yes, it directly that is affects what the saying. brain is what we are Not the ears? It does begin from there but okay. it, the effect goes on till the brain. And you have published recently uh, this work. Yes. You have published a lot, 100 papers, about 30 chapters to books. You have attended more than 100 conferences and presented papers there. You have been to so many countries, right from Japan to United States to Canada to Australia to all kinds of places, Russia included in that. Has this interaction enriched your research? Yes, it uh, always is important to listen to what is uh, being done. Um, and with every uh, conference, I found that I always had a new, uh, newer idea and a better way of looking at things. And I tried to improve my uh, methodologies. Which, which raises two issues. One, that science knows no boundaries. National, international, caste, creed, all kinds of boundaries do not exist for science. Absolutely. Science is a discipline where as much you interact, you know more and more. The other issue uh, that you have raised just now is that there is always an increase in the knowledge when you interact with others and there is a lot of give and take in science. What kind of moments you had in life where you said, yes, this is the idea that I want to pursue and I have hit the nail, I have I've hit the solution or hit the problem and it's a good problem too. Can you recollect? some of the As incidents in life, yes, in the yeah. laboratory or in the conference or while interacting with other scientists? Absolutely, absolutely. One was when uh, uh, we were, uh, one of course was my uh, mentor, Dr. I was, I, Professor Veena Bijlani. In fact, she was the one who put me on to the development of the uh, nervous system. And uh, from there, that story has not stopped. And uh, I have to give my uh, due regard to my teacher on that aspect. And uh, having done, got that incentive from her to work, uh, she, in fact, it was she who pushed me into doing my uh, PhD uh, that I should do something. And the ball started rolling from there on. So that was one big influence. Uh, no, I'm not talking about influence. I am saying that when did you in life, you, do you remember some incident where you said, okay, this is the thing that I wanted to do. Yeah, that's what it was that put into development and that is why I have continued all these years. Mm -hmm. So it was a direction that was there and it never stopped. So the seed was sown uh, at that point in time. But then there were some interesting inputs also which came in subsequently. My interaction with Professor Mrigang Sur when he was uh, on a CSIR uh, fellowship, fellowship to uh, to, uh, India. to India and uh, with him uh, talking to him uh, changed a lot of my uh, um, uh, concepts and as well as ideas into looking at things uh, with in, at a different uh, in a different way 
And that is when I started my work on the human retina, looking at it with a dye which he so very kindly gave me, a small bit of it. So that changed the direction. In fact, that paper is a, a seminal paper for me. And subsequently, when I went to Singapore for a meeting, I had an interaction with uh, Professor Thomas Blum there. And he was, in fact, interested in uh, looking at the auditory pathway. And uh, it was from there on that I started looking at the auditory system. And again, it has carried on for the next and for the last 15 years that uh, I have just stuck to the auditory system. You uh, have been getting uh, medals right from the beginning, which means that medals during your college days, school, college, later on, and all the awards that one can aspire for, national as well as international. Uh, you have got uh, Bhatnagar's award, and uh, that is equivalent to Indian equivalent to Nobel Prize. Which award uh, did you think was the award that gave you a lot of excitation or suspect? You realize that now my work is being recognized. In school, I was performing as I was, uh, and that is what I have done all my life, um, work to an extent that to you, you feel good about it. And I think that was uh, what happened. And the awards came along, and definitely the Bhatnagar Award. We are receiving first gold medal. Uh, the first gold medal that I got was for achieving, for getting the highest marks in biology in school, high secondary. And, uh, did that you feel that kind of excitation later on? Yes, I uh, did feel because every time that you are awarded, it, it gives you a, a greater impetus to work. Not only that, and a responsibility that you have uh, been, your work has been recognized and you probably need to push yourself a little more beyond. On a daily basis, how many hours did you work? The day began at 6 every day and it ended at 11 or 12 at night. So <laughs> how these years of the 40 years that I spent at All India Institute of Medical Sciences, which was my work boomy, as I would say, uh, that uh, place, that's the schedule I followed. But you did enjoy life as well. What message would you like to give to the younger generation? Uh, as I keep telling my students that uh, you have taken up a mission for yourself and uh, keep working hard. The results will follow. Uh, and be true to yourself and um, enjoy life along with it. But follow something and follow it with a passion. On that note, we'll sign off today. Continue watching Scientifically Yours. We'll be back next week with another equally fascinating personality. Goodbye.